Good morning. Hope everyone's doing good today. It is May 3rd, third day of the month, third day without the boof. Feeling all right this morning. I didn't have the greatest sleep, not gonna lie. Uh, like I was chatting about yesterday's episode. The worst, literally the worst part of the weed uh, withdrawal is definitely the nightmares. I was pretty bad last night. I woke up at least two, three times, if not four. The, yeah, just, I, I don't want to go super into detail, just kind of gruesome stuff, stuff that you don't want to see in your sleep. Uh, I, I, I was debating getting up and just started moving, but uh, I wanted to get up decently early today. What is it? 9.30 time right now. Got up at around 9. It's it's a little later than I would have liked to. I try to get up a little earlier on my days off just because I find that I am more productive in the morning as opposed to late at night, especially with how much I've been kind of pushing myself, pushing my body recently with the gym, the cardio and all the physical activity that I am doing in a day. But all that being said, yeah, definitely looking forward to in a week or week and a half when my brain kind of regulates itself a little more, gets used to not having that whatever chemical response from the weed and I'm able to dream actually normal. And you do get nice dreams too when you're off of it. Uh, it's something that I'm definitely looking forward to as well. Not just not having nightmares, but having actual nice dreams, being back to being sober and all that. But yeah, let's get going for today. One thing that I just wanted to mention is um, I've tried it before and it's uh, it, it does work, but use it almost at your own risk. If you have trouble falling asleep or if you want to almost go into deeper sleep or if you're having troubles, you know, you keep waking up because of nightmares and stuff. Something that I've tried before, I took a break for a while just because uh, like I was talking about yesterday with, with the supplements thing, if I don't necessarily need, I tend to kind of stay away from it. I, I don't like to depend on any substance unless I really need it. But I might start taking it again for this week just to help with the nightmares and actually get through a decent night's sleep, especially when I have to get back to work and wake up at 6 a.m. It's melatonin. This is no secret. I'm, I'm not revealing anything crazy. It's obviously a pretty a widely understood and used, you know, product. But I like these too because they, they smell really, really good. Chamomile and lavender flavor. And they do work pretty good. These are the VIX kind, but yeah, I just thought I'd put that out there for anyone going through like the, the first week or two of, uh, of taking a break off the weed, just because I know based on the last two episodes, uh, I did get some comments and some messages based on, on that, on the weed withdrawal and all that. So uh, yeah, just thought I'd, I'd put that out there to help. We have for today, uh, we're going to keep it a little open, but some stuff that I wanted to touch base about is uh, business. It's something that I'm very passionate about. I actually went to school, college for two years for it in the fitness and health promotion program. I loved it. It was right up my alley. I, I was mostly, honestly, I mostly entered that program and I see a lot of people doing this for to please the people around me. So my folks, just so you know, I, I would be in their respectable profession. And also because I knew for sure that I would land a, a good job, right? A government job. It's it's a, a safer field to be in, coder, right? There's a lot of demand uh, at, at the time that I was applying. But all that to say, yeah, graduated from that. It was a great program. Actually learned a lot. As much as I did know a good amount about fitness at the time. So I got interested in uh, working out and fitness, all that at, at about the age of 14. I started that program at the age of 19. So obviously I had a four four and a half year gap of experience on my own stuff that I learned, stuff that I learned from the internet, stuff that I learned from experience, from training with others. But it was pretty nice to actually learn from teachers that know what they're talking about, proper procedures, proper ways to treat injuries when you're training with someone, which is probably one of the biggest takeaways from the program that I would say and recommend if someone isn't interested in personal training. On that note, uh, in Canada anyways, and other places as far as I know, you're not required to have a college degree to be a personal trainer. Let's say if you want to work at a commercial gym, so Planet Fitness or Good Life, the only thing required, like a lot of jobs, is the CPR certification and first aid, and also a recognized uh, personal training license, which is something outside of the program that I had to acquire. So I got mine, I live in Canada, so one of the, well, I think, yeah, it's safe to say the most popular personal training certification nationwide is CSEP. So I got that certification as I graduated the program. There's a couple others as well, but it's, like I said, it's the most popular one. 
It's the one that trainers that I already knew were doing. It's the one that a lot of my friends at the program were doing. And uh, yeah, it, it went good. It went all right. So there's a written and a in-person part of the test. The in-person one, unfortunately, was online, but we got through it and all that. Uh, but yeah, moving on. So I got that done, and then I got hired at a gym, not as a trainer, actually. At the time, I was just working front desk. I just wanted to be working in the environment, be in the, the gym environment. I see with my own eyes what I was getting myself into before kind of hopping into the trainer position. I was not still am pretty much a shy guy with people that I'm not familiar with. It's something I've been getting a little bit better with, with kind of like faking confidence and just, you know, having more faith in myself a little bit. Yeah, but all that being said, so I had the job at the gym and you know, at the time it was a little weird cause I, so I worked there for a couple months and then I moved and the timing was good. So when I moved uh, to where I am now, I did apply to work for that same gym, but a different location. So that same chain. So I played to, uh, applied to work for a good life one closer to me and um the first job i actually didn't get and i was pretty upset because it was a nice gym it was something that i was looking forward to uh, i lost the position to someone with more experience you know i i was a little upset because it, it was a nice gym like a nice new gym it, it looked like a good environment to work at but i didn't give up i later applied to a different gym which was a, a little further away from me got that one and then kind of had a, an epiphany do i really want to work for someone have to do it their i always say like their cookie cutter way because because they have a model right like a lot of businesses it works they're not gonna give as much flexibility to their trainers because they know what works right they know what makes money they they know how to bring back their clients they worked in package deals which i wasn't a fan of so you had to buy obviously all the sessions were in person that's that's the difference the main difference between what i'm doing now and what i would have been doing so all in-person training, selling in three, uh, what is it, three, anyways, three to seven day, separate day packages, right? And you're able to schedule those and spread them however you'd like. But at the end of the day, I just wasn't a fan of how they were selling, how they were pricing, being the main one, and how they would work, which seemed a little too similar how they were operating for every client. I just didn't see that working for someone like me. A, as a trainer, and B, I put myself in my trainees, like my client's shoes, and... I was just thinking if I were to take this type of training, this wouldn't work for me at all. I would need something else. So I was lucky enough at the time that online training, online fitness was actually becoming viable and not just a crazy thing that you hear of once in a while. Because at face value, right, it sounds kind of weird. Like, what, what do you mean you train clients online? Like, you don't see them. But we make it work, you know, without going into crazy amount of details. Who doesn't have one of these today? Who doesn't walk around with one of these at all times? So we definitely make it work. Uh, I check up on them as much as I can. We have calls once a week. It, it, it just works, right? So I was lucky enough, timing-wise, with how the world was working, that there was a open part of the market for people looking for more affordable training. And it's more realistic too, right? I, I train with a lot of students and busy, not just students, but people around my age or older that have jobs that I'm not able to meet in person or right three, four, five days a week. It just doesn't work. There's even folks that I'm training two hours away from me. There's folks that I'm training in a different province. There's people I'm training across the country. I, I was even training someone from India, right? So I would not be able to have that diverse base of clients if I wasn't training online. Another advantage too of having that online type of business is I'm able to work on it on my own time as much as I want. So that being said, uh, I can stay up all night or get up super early, work on, bang out all the work I need to do for the week, bang out all the, the client plans, their meal plans, book the calls when I need to, when I need to make that happen. So yeah, I thought about it through just to loop back around and uh, yeah, it just made more sense to start my own thing at that time i politely declined his offer to work for that gym and i just let him know i'm like i think uh, there's a little conflict here my heart isn't fully into it and you know i kind of let him know i'm i might just do my own thing i think that was the the last kick that i needed to get going and uh yeah something i didn't mention before even when i worked at that first gym just at the front desk on that computer too or like like on my phone while i was working there i was kind of brainstorming. I always wanted to kind of start my own thing. It's something that I've 
thought about for a while just being your own boss making your own your own rules a little bit not that i don't like working for someone else i i don't but it's not the full reason i i'm just a really big fan of all the downfalls and all the ups all the positives all fall on you right if you're having a bad month if your your sales aren't up it's your fault if you get a bunch of clients and it's going good it's all your fault so the business when i work for myself when i'm the owner it all falls on me and I, I I like that kind of pressure. I'm not gonna lie, and it does it does push me to work a lot harder as opposed to being under someone else. Where sorry, if the business does get good, it doesn't matter because I do get paid by the hour. As opposed to this, I get paid more for every client, right? So big fan of that, and uh, it was just a no brainer at that point. Like I said, it was something that was on my mind, and uh, just the fact that I was doubting it after leaving that successful interview, like that second one that actually gave me the job that was it i had a call with my my mom very wonderful woman with a great head on her shoulders and uh, i'll be honest i already knew the answer i just wanted you know sometimes you just want to hear it from someone else part of the reason why we confide in people right sometimes your heart knows where you want to go your heart knows the decision it doesn't need it doesn't need time up here just needs to figure it out right so it's like the popular saying, always follow your heart. And and there, there's definitely truth to that because I think I'm a lot happier now than if I would have been stuck there. <laughs> I say stuck. See, e even like like words like that just naturally came out, but that's really how I feel. I, I would have been stuck there. And even though, I mean, I'm going to be real. It's not, I'm not making crazy amounts of money right now where I'm able to live solely off that, right? I'm doing other stuff. And I do have a part-time job as well to feed into my income, but this is only the start, which is how I like to see it, right? In only a year, I've gone up to 15 clients. So give me another year, give me five years, give me 10 years. Where am I going to be? Am I going to own my own gym? Am I going to have trainers working under me? That's all stuff in the plans, right? But it's, it, it's a slow, it's a slow race. It's a marathon, right? Not a sprint. So... I think also in the long run, if, if we're talking money, not that it's all about that, but it's right business. It's, it's, it's a main part of why I'm doing it for sure. I'm not doing it solely because I love training and I'm passionate about helping others, which is, you know, I want to say like 60% of it, but the other 40% is your boy's got to make money, right? Food ain't free. Clothes ain't free. You know, he's, man's got to eat. Yeah. But all that to say, yeah. I'm, I'm kind of looping around there, but the main thing I wanted to say is it's a lot easier to start a business than most people think. I'm, I'm saying this because I've, I've talked with a lot of people and, you know, start to confine in me because they see that I've done it and they're like, it's one of those things that I was thinking as well when I was starting like, man, this, this guy can do it. This, this girl can do it. Why can I? And obviously there, there's harder models than other ones. I kept mine very simple at first. But it's always evolving too, right? At first, I would send my plans out by email. I would write everything on hand, PDF, send them out. But now I use the software for it. So it, it's one of those things that's ever evolving. But what I'm trying to get at is if you want to start, you just have to start. Obviously, the there's legal components to it. Register, you'll have to start bank accounts. I don't want to get super into that because that's stuff that you can easily find on YouTube. It's stuff that I, I learned all of it by myself and I'm not, I'm not an idiot, but I'm not the smartest guy, right? I didn't go to school for business, but I just want to say if someone like me can figure it out when there's a will, there's a way, right? You just, you just have to spend the time on it and it's, it's something that you actually have to care about. I don't think you should start a business just because you want to make money. I see some of those fail. I think that for your first business anyways, some people disagree on this. Some people say it should be something that you're passionate about. I've heard others say that your first business shouldn't be something that you're too tied to it emotionally and passionate about because you will make decisions based off your heart. And I can see truth in that, but I can't speak on it because I do not have that experience. Uh, both my businesses right now are things that I do care about. So clothing and fitness, two things that, that are dear to my heart, right? It's not like I'm in a real estate or oil or selling foreign exchange or I'm just thinking of other stuff, cleaning windows, which is, is the counter argument, right? So if you don't care as much about it, if your heart's not into it, you won't be afraid to make those big decisions, which I definitely understand. And there's definitely truth to that. But like I said, I can't attest to that. That's just 
stuff that I've heard from from talks, successful businessmen. But yeah, back to what I wanted to say. So starting a business, anyone can do it. It's about taking that first step. Obviously have some planning. Don't just go into it and spend you know, thousands of your own money, take out your savings and get a bunch of grants without thinking about it first. Obviously, that is the first step. But when I say just start, it means stop putting it up here and start start putting it out there. So whether it's on paper, whether it's talking to people in the business already, very underrated tip. So if you're uh, if you want to start a real estate business or selling houses, don't be afraid to book calls or emails or just chats with someone, you, you'll be very surprised the amount of people that will give you free knowledge and will appreciate you reaching out, right? Um, the worst they can do is not answer, say no, or give you a polite email back. And if you feel like you're wasting their time, that, that's what I mean. If if they don't want to, they'll tell you no. If, if they do, then you get free knowledge. And there's no better, yes, there's a lot of YouTube stuff out there. Obviously, I've learned a lot of stuff both business and for personal training in school and on YouTube, on the internet. But there is no better teacher than someone in person that has gone through it. A very good saying that I read recently is success leaves clues. And it makes you think, right? Obviously, they got there doing specific things. They've done bad things. They've learned from that. And obviously, as much as you should learn from your own mistakes, and um, failure is the biggest teacher, if there's some stuff you can avoid, if there's some money you can save on the way, you know, why not, right? Free free advice can be good if it's from someone who has gone through it, right? Just I was hesitant of saying that because be wary of free advice, right? If it's your buddy, if you're talking to him, yeah, you know, maybe thinking about starting a, a window cleaning business and he has no idea. He's been working in a different field all his life and he tries to give you advice. Maybe don't listen to that guy, right? Well, yeah, obviously things you need before starting a business, business plan is a big one. Name and logo is stuff that people can get hung up on a lot as well. Like me, I know I'm a perfectionist, so it took me just the name took me a while, but it's, it is important, right? You, you don't want to minimize the impact that it has on your business. It is the face of your business, right? It's, it's stuff that people will see all the time. It's really what's associated to your whole brand. For me, the route I chose to take is to go with a different name, something that will stick out. So Victrix based off a Latin name, but it's not even a real word, right? I took off a letter. So it does stick out when you see it and it's all caps too. It's, it's a little different. So there's different routes you can take for the name. That's something that you can look up, right? There's a bunch of tools you can do. You can do uh, put your name, in the business name, you can do uh, something on the nose that will catch your attention. So if you live in Toronto, it could be like Toronto, Toronto uh, window experts or something like that. Just off the bat, reading that name, you know, if you're shopping for windows or whatever, you're bound to click that guy more than Toronto window guys, right? Something else to think about too, depending of the type of business that you're running is if you want you your face and your persona attached to the business, depending what type of business you're running, depending what type of branding your business has, depending what type of presence your business has online and in the market. Me personally, I have uh, of the business. So for me, it just makes sense to be a face of the business. Like when, when people see my brand, they think of me and vice versa, right? They know when they see me question, I get asked a lot because I tie myself to my business, vice versa. Oh, how's the training going? Oh, I'd be interested in no, no, no. They just know. So that can definitely be a smart move for sure. Especially uh, entering the game of social media. Very powerful tool. Uh, something important to touch base is research your idea. So I've had a couple middle of last year after starting, after after having, you know, running running my current business for a couple months. I wanted to start something else with a buddy for a secondary form of income to leave my current job. But after doing research, you know, we were all excited to do this thing, enter another venture. But after doing research, look, actually breaking down the cost, the, the cost did make sense. It, it was a, it wasn't a crazy expensive venture and it would have made sense with a couple with a small loan and putting some of our money aside. But after researching the competition, it just didn't make sense for the amount of effort we were willing to put while still owning other jobs. It just wasn't something that we were able to do part time. So researching not only your idea, does it already exist? What is the market? Is it doable? And the fees is definitely something that you'd want to look at before spending that money on the incorporation, on the fees, on all the equipment. Uh, so that's one of the things when I say just start, 
as in don't just launch it right away just start includes doing the back end doing the research step zero right funding as well a very important part of starting the business but me d depending on what your business is right me just going back to me again as an example uh, when i started my online personal training all i needed was i already had a computer i didn't even use the softwares that i use today so i use the software for the meal plans when i say a software it's it, it, it just makes it nice and tidy on the pdf and I use the software to deliver the training. But when I started, man, I used Gmail to send out the uh, training programs. I think I only paid for, what did I pay for? One service to book my calls. So automatically when someone signed up for the, the questionnaire, right? For all their information, if they were interested in training, I think it was Calendly, it was called. So it would send an email and then it would book, link it to my calendar and, and it would let them book a time, which I don't even, I don't even use anymore now. It's a lot more text-based and all that. Um, it, it's more manual. I didn't like the automatic approach because my calendar does shift a lot and I, I rather work with them. Uh, but all that to say, depending on your business, yes, evaluate the cost. Yes, definitely write down a cost sheet, right? What it's going to cost. And then on the other side, so take the money you're willing to put aside, whether it's you or you and your partners, the grant slash loans that you're going to have, and then subtract from that all the starting costs. So like I said, I'm no business major and all that, but what we did for our venture that didn't end up happening, but we subtracted, there, there was some fees, like there was car insurance in there. There was buying a car, all, all the material and supplies, obviously. And there was renting fees, renting for storage lockers. So what we did to be safe is... We included in the startup cost, the first, was it four or six? I think it was the first, I think it was the first four months of all of those reoccurring monthly fees. So four months of the renting the locker, four months of car insurance. And there was another one. Uh, I forget what it was. I think it was a license. But we included those in the startup fee as a way to say, worst case scenario, we don't get any business for four months. We're not making any money. This is just going to take away money from our, you know, our budget. So we'll definitely be smart about the cost plan, I guess you want to call it and and look at you know, what, like really think about it thoroughly, because we thought like, you know, when you think, Oh, man, this is a cheap, like, if you're thinking cleaning windows, I, I keep using that example, because I, I had a summer job one time cleaning windows. And you might think at first, it's cheap, you know, Oh, it's just soap and water, man, and rags and all that. That'll be man, 50 bucks for a month. We're good. We're going to be making bank. But what you don't realize is you got to buy at least two to three different types of ladders. Even used, those are going to be expensive. You need a car, whether you're loaning or buying, you need insurance on that car. You need the proper straps on top of the, on top of the car. Just all that adds up, right? If you're, you, you're probably not going to do a house alone. It's going to take you three times the amount of work. You got to hire one to two other employees. Just really thoroughly think through, sit down with yourself or you and your partner and think through all the costs. As little as it is, the gas, gas is another thing that you got to keep in mind, right? If you have a car, price of gas ain't cheap. Insurance, just all the little stuff like that, right? Any software you'll need. Yeah, just really think it through because the last thing you want is to be in the hole when you're, when you're starting to get off from the business, right? By registering your business, I don't want to get super, super into it because it's more of a legal part of thing. One tip that I can give, I think it's only for Canada, but if you're looking to register or incorporate your business and you don't want to go through the manual way through the government, there is an amazing, I guess, website organization that does it for you. They're called owner. So O W N R. I do believe they're owned by RBC. Whether you want a sole proprietorship or you want to incorporate, I think sole is 50 bucks. Cause I was sole at first and I recently incorporated. I think that the incorporation, excuse me, is uh, 300 with some other fees. So they do charge. Is it one or one ninety nine a year to take care of updating your books, which is something you would have to do manually takes a lot of time or you hire. I don't even know who you would hire for that. Probably not an accountant, but a lawyer, maybe a business lawyer. Anyways, they take care of that for you for the fees. And it's something that you are able to write off. So I definitely recommend them. And I'll have a look if I'm able to put a discount code or whatnot or a referral link to save you guys. It'll be down below. So keep an eye in the description for that. But anyways, yeah, they keep all your business documents on hand as well. You pretty much all you have to do is uh, fill in the information, fill in even for incorporating like 
the complicated process for the shareholders and all that. They do walk you through it. They guide you through it for, for a first time or someone who has limited business knowledge. This guy here, very easy to use. Uh, even, man, I, I, I got to give him a big shout out because they were very help, helpful. Even their staff, when you have any questions and their little chatter in their emails, they respond within half a day. Very, very helpful. And they do, I think they even give you back. Yeah, they're definitely owned by RBC or partnered with because when you open a bank account with uh, RBC within X amount of days, they give you some of the money back. And which, which is something you do need to do anyways, right? When you open, I mean, definitely when you incorporate, it's under a separate entity. You do need to open a bank account anyways. So, you know, um, they're, they're not paying me to say this or anything, but RBC, like they're all right. I use them for now and I, I don't have too many complaints. Yeah. Building a brand as well is important. Obviously, there's different ways to go about it. Social media is your best friend. It's free advertising. You can get in front of thousands, if not millions of eyes if you're doing it well. It's what I've used for most of my marketing. I'm not, I haven't even paid for a single ad. I've been running my business for a year and I'm still do working off word of mouth and just engagement on social media. It's free, especially the way the, the, the virality of the algorithm is what i mean by that is if you catch it right stuff can fly off right free views with, without paying a single penny so use that as your best friend i don't have any experience in tv or in person or radio in person as in like mail or paper advertising not something i want to dive into it just doesn't seem worth it for my business right now because my business is online it just makes sense to advertise online that is my customer base but I'm going to keep going to the window cleaning example. That might not be a bad idea to advertise in person, right? Know, know your niche. I don't want to dive into the niche. It's something that you can look up if you want to start your own business. Uh, finding your niche is definitely ex important. Finding your avatar, as they call it. So your perfect client. So for example, I'll, I'll just touch base a little bit. Me, my avatar, my niche. I'm looking at like 18 to 30 year old men that are into bettering their lives into fitness. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't want to give it away 100%, but that's like a broad niche for me. I mostly target guys, like I said, young adults looking to better themselves, looking to fitness. Yeah, what was I saying about advertising? Yeah, depending on your business, it might just make more sense to advertise in person like flyers. Because window cleaning is a lot of word of mouth. And let's say I clean this guy. His neighbor might want. Uh, oh, man, I was talking to Jerry next door, eh? He did a great job. You gave him a good quote on his windows. Hey, while we're here, sir. Yeah, nice to meet you. We're Toronto uh, window experts. Yeah, we'll give you a quote there if you give me five minutes, me and my boys. Uh, and then you give them business cards. Or, if, hey, do, do you mind if uh, we leave a flyer here uh, on your mailbox I, I saw? That might work more than on social media. Because you don't want... If you're working in the Toronto area, you don't care about advertising over to Sudbury or Vancouver, right? You don't want those ads to go all the way out there. So know your market, know your avatar, know your niche and experiment. Not saying do just one, try it out. You know what I mean? I've tried flyers in person for my training. I didn't get a single response. I do stuff online. I get a lot more engagement from that, right? So don't be, don't be afraid to try different stuff. But when something works, stick with it, right? Supportive team. Uh, and having people around you that not only support your business as in like, you know, give you money, but I mean, just people that not just resources, but s support you in, in the sense that feed off friends and family that support you for sure. That's going to be very helpful, especially when you start a business. It can, it can look very dark, very gray for the start when the money isn't necessarily coming in at first, but you know, you got to keep a head up, chin up. And that's why you need those people in your life. You know what I mean? And, and when I say that, I know there's a couple people that come to mind and those are the ones that they're really going to help out. So don't be afraid to, uh, what am I trying to say here? Just, just appreciate those people for sure. And, and make them, let, let them know for sure. Right. It, uh, a, a verbal thank you can go a long way. And I'm not, and like I said, not just the ones that like buy your service. Like I don't, I don't train all of my friends. I train some of them, but just the ones that are there and support, or when I put something out, just give me feedback, even feedback. You know what I mean? Feedback doesn't cost anything, just cost them five, 10 minutes. If, hey, can you look over this? Hey, what do you think of this? And an honest opinion is the best one, right? You, you don't want a yes man. So I always tell people when, when, they, when I do ask for their opinion, for their feedback, I tell them, please like, be brutally honest because that's the only way that I will improve and get better. But yeah, what I meant also by su supportive people around you is your team. If you are gonna have people under your belt, hire trust is the biggest thing. 
if you own the business, if the business is under your name, if you are the boss, I would rather have someone with a little less skill, but that I trust, not with my life, but almost, right, that I trust with my business, than someone with all the skill in the world, but that I don't trust at all. That's just how I operate, because I always think that you can train someone, you can make someone better, you can mold them into the type of employee, the type of worker that you want, as opposed to trust and loyalty is a lot harder to learn and teach and doesn't necessarily come with time, right? People tend to show their true colors. So that's one big tip that I could give on hiring. And uh, not only that, but if you're going to be working, depending what type of position, if you're like a call center type of job, it doesn't really matter their values and morals. It, 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 it obviously matters because these people represent you. But if they're doing like a copywriting type of job, a physical labor type of job, it doesn't matter too much. But what I'm trying to get at is if you're were, if you're hiring like a assistant manager, someone that will represent you and your brand in person, have those dialogues, have those conversation with clients, have like if I were to hire a, another trainer under me, a physiotherapist, I want someone that has the um, training philosophies and the values that me and my business represent, right? It would any clash of ideas, you're just moving backwards if you're doing that. And uh, what I mean by that is just what they value in terms of output of work. It doesn't matter their their, their background or, or what they believe in in terms of, you know, religion or w what they do at home. That's fine. Obviously, like diversity is never an issue in that aspect. I just mean in, in terms of uh, work productivity, right? You don't want the gears to clash. You want them to all work together. Yeah. The last piece of, of advice I could give is be adaptive and be willing to change. Obviously, in a business, especially in this type of world, the fast moving, fast consuming type of world, you want to be alert to what's going on. You want to be adaptable. Some models, some types, some industries are, are more malleable than others. Like, for example, window cleaning is always going to be window cleaning. There's unless they invent like crazy robots to start doing that. But even then it's it's you're cleaning windows, right? There, there's one way to do it. There's different ways to bring the service. But at the end of the day, you are cleaning windows as opposed to personal training. See, like just if, if you would have brought up online personal training to someone five, ten years ago, what the hell are you talking? What do you mean online? What you're going to email me? How does that make sense? Every little exercise, it just doesn't work. But now I deliver everything from their phone. There's instructional videos. They can talk to me. So in today's market or in today's world, it makes sense. Will it still make sense in five years? Will I, will I I'll probably have to change my model. Maybe it's going to be even more virtual, more face to face, but still online. So all I'm trying to say is be open to new ideas explore see what's out there see what type of resources look at your competition see what they're doing see if it works for them see what doesn't work for them and yeah just be open as in don't be afraid to try new stuff like i mentioned earlier different type of marketing strategies something might hit if something doesn't hit don't waste your time and money with it especially with advertising it can be very expensive when you're not getting your money back but yeah i do believe that a business depending of what it is, obviously, and I'm, I'm no expert, but in my experience right now with what I do own and operate is uh, being a chameleon can definitely be helpful. All right, we're going to wrap that up for today. Kind of a different type of episode based on a sole topic. But yeah, as always, let me know feedback in the comments and all that in the messages, how you guys feel about this type of content, I guess. I'm going to treat, I'm going to keep trying different type of stuff. I do, I do like this type as well as the more open ranty type of, uh, content. I know there's people that appreciate the, the openness talking about the, the weed thing, taking a break from that and personal experience. But I, I do want to give, you know, business is a part of my life and I do want to give some advice for what I do know on that out there in a type of uh, kind of laid back format, right? just from personal experience. So yeah, we'll, we'll see how that goes. But uh, thanks for all the support so far. And I will see you guys in the next episode.